worshiping with such beautifulness already. Uh, my name is Reverend Chantel Washington. I am the pastor teacher here at First Congregational Church West Springfield. I welcome you on this wonderful Christmas Eve night. We are here together in person and virtually to welcome the season, to introduce the night in preparation for tomorrow, Christmas Day, and we have another opportunity to serve. I want to say welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you for those of you who join us virtually. I want to give a special greeting to my husband who drove over the highways across country to get here when I said, I want you here for Christmas Eve. <laughs> and I pray to God that you got here in California. Always glad to have you with us in worship. Happy someone who played the cello magnificently magnificently has the same last name as you. Is that your son? Nathan, I know he stepped away, but let's give another hand clap for that amazing, amazing time in the cello, The cello was um, and is the son of our minister of music, Kathy. That was Nathan Marks. Oh, praise God. And Marjorie, blessings to you for reeling us in with our minister of music, Kathy, to get us ready for worship. Uh, this Sunday, we will have our what we call Pajama Sunday. Come dress relaxed. Now, in the UCC, we always say come as you are. So you already come relaxed, kind of. But we mean, if you want to wear your pajamas, it's okay this Sunday. We'll be here together on Sunday at 10 a.m. And, uh, and we'll be together in joy and, um, and in worship. I remind you that we'll wear our masks for worship for the whole service, except for when we are leading a part of worship, we will then put our masks on when we're not leading. And when we're leading, we'll take it off for that brief time frame. So as we continue to pray and be cognizant of safety for one another, We'll wear our masks throughout service. We're just glad that you're able to be here. Um, lastly, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on this journey, you are welcome here. We'll start by singing our opening song together. I invite you to either use the African American Heritage Hymnal or see the words in your bulletin. We'll sing together, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Please stay. <laughs>
lovely contributors to worship that are singing with us tonight. We're so grateful for your presence, all of you. I invite you to recognize that there are candles at the entrance table, and if you would like to put a prayer request on the candle and add it to our prayer tree, you're welcome to do so at any time in the service. Or you can email us at prayer at firstchurchws.org, and it should be in your bulletin. Let us prepare to pray together. If we look at the world and its challenges, it is clear we need a Savior. If we look at our own communities and their divisions and strength, it is clear we need a Savior. If we examine our own lives, it is clear we need a Savior. Let us pray together the way Jesus taught us to pray. Holy One of Israel, we have walked in our hearts. We have known the despair of loneliness, and we have failed to reach out to others in their despair. We understand suffering, and we confess that even when we have the means to alleviate it, sometimes we don't. So children go to bed hungry, and preventable disease still kills, and war still festers. You sent us Jesus, God made flesh, who showed us who you are, the values you cherish, the ways that leads to life. Thank you. Help us now to follow the light of Christ, expand our hearts to include all those he loved, open our hands to serve others as he did, open our minds so that we are no longer inhibited by our own prejudices. Make us doers of justice, lovers of kindness, and a people known for our humility. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In all circumstances and at all times, God loves us. Even when we screw up in battle, God loves us still. Nothing in heaven or on earth can separate us from that love. Not our apathy, not our lack of understanding, not our arrogance or low self-esteem, <coughs> not anything. We are forgiven. Okay. Amen. We'll now have the lighting of our advocate. We'll sing together when God is a child. The words are in your voice.
chapter 7 from the New International Version Bible. But when the kindness of God and our God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of his righteous, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Now have our anthem, Angels Power.
children's version of chapter of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. We have to go to Bethlehem, Joseph told Mary. Emperor Augustus has ordered that all the people need to be counted. But Joseph, Mary said, what about our baby? He will be born soon. We'll go slowly, Mary. Bethlehem will be crowded, so we need to leave now. So Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem, the city of David, to be counted along with all the other people. It was cold when they arrived there. Joseph knocked on many doors, looking for a room. But everyone said no. Finally, one innkeeper answered his door. I have no room, the innkeeper said, but you can stay in the stable in the back. It's warm and the hay is fresh. Joseph, Mary said, I think it's time for the baby to be born. That night, Mary gave birth to Jesus. She laid him in a manger. The animals kept them warm as they waited for morning.
was right. The shepherds found the baby Jesus fast asleep. They told Mary and Joseph all the angel had said. The angel said the baby is the Messiah, the promised one. He is the one we have waited for, they explained. But this is a stable. Would God be born here among the animals? Do we have any animal sounds? Hounds, sheep, humans, barbarians, and the was Emmanuel, God with us. Later the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for all they had seen and heard. Jesus was born.
Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning, the Word was already there. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him. Nothing that has been made was made without Him. Life was in Him. And that life was the light for all people. I'd like to look at what we already know, but is a beautiful reminder of why Christmas is so special. I mean, we already know that it's typically a time where we're allowed to get together with people. And in our world today, that's a little bit strange, I'd say. We're not able to completely get together like we would like to. There are limits. But in our hearts, we're able to still love those people that we can't be around. We're able to reach out and talk to them. Uh, at different times and different ways. Um, how many people this year have done Zoom that have never done it before in 2021? There are, there are hands raised. And, and that's our new reality for um, some of our communication. But I want us to remember that we get this gift. We have this gift that brings us joy. And it's not wrapped up in a beautiful little package. It doesn't have fine paper and bows and see-through invisible tape. But it is the gift that has been told to us for many, many, many centuries before it actually even came to pass. And then written about for us to revisit Reread, review, and reenact. God gave his only son. And not only did God give that son to us so that we can reconnect, so that we can grow stronger and closer to God, but God gave it to us in a way that we could understand. So there's so many things that people have been learning in the Torah, in holy writings, in faith practices that they couldn't see and they couldn't really relate to. They weren't tangible things. They were things they had to believe. But God saw that God's people, the people that he created, were struggling with that. 
And so God said, hey, you know, I'm going to give it to you plain. It's not going to be completely traditional because Mary is going to be a virgin. But she's going to carry a baby in her womb. She's going to birth that baby naturally. And that baby will have flesh and blood and veins and struggles just like my other creations called humans. And maybe then you'll get it this much better. What a gift. I mean, how many times have we been exposed to something and didn't quite get it? In classrooms, you didn't get it. And if you didn't get it, you might raise your hand and ask a question. But there are many of us who sat there and didn't get it and didn't say anything. And then there are some of us who didn't get it and thought we had it and did it wrong, made mistakes. <laughs> but we didn't always get that additional gift in our education where we were allowed to try it differently, to feel it, relate to it, be exposed profoundly in a way that would work for us. That would be some good education, right? <clears throat> and so God saw fit to give us this gift so that we could understand it, so that we could recognize it, and so that it could change our lives. When we think about this gift, it does still require us to have faith. I mean, yes, we were able to see that there was a baby born, the way babies are born, not conceived, but born, right? We were able to see at the end of Jesus' life that even when he rose from the dead and someone doubted that it was actually Jesus, someone needed to have that ability to relate and put the finger in the hole. We have been given countless gifts through the life of Jesus. And on Christmas, it's our time to celebrate the gift that God gave us and all of the joys that come with it. Because Jesus did things that we could relate to. Jesus looked at people who were hungry and did something about it. We can relate to that, right? Jesus prayed for people. Jesus talked to people that other people didn't like talking to. Jesus ate with people that other people didn't understand. Why would he eat with them? Jesus turned water into wine for his mom at a wedding. You know, Jesus did things that we understand. And he did them so that we would understand. So that we could recognize and relate to this profound gift of relationship with God. And not just relationship with God, but the ability to have a closer and deeper relationship with God. Now, everybody gets this gift. Have you ever seen someone receive a gift and not really like it? So they don't take it or they re-gift it? No judgment. I'm just saying, sometimes people don't take advantage of the gift that they have. And that, that happens with Jesus as well. There are people who are walking around our earth not taking full grasp and full advantage of the fact that they have the opportunity through Jesus' life and death to get closer to God. And they walk around and they struggle because they don't understand what to do when they have worries. They don't understand what to do when they have questions and concerns. They don't know where to turn when their depression gets deep. They don't know who to look to when they don't know what to do about finances, about relationships, about pain and grief. They don't open the gift. The gift is there. And it takes faith for us to open the gift of Jesus. The gift of closer relationship with God. And so, granted, we do have this gift, but we have to grasp. We have to reach for it. We have to believe that it is a gift. And it is the gift, I like to say, that keeps on giving. <laughs> it's free. 
It doesn't expire. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't disintegrate. It doesn't get old. Wow. We can't say that about all gifts. But this gift, this gift that we celebrate on Christmas, that God gave to us is one that we can grab hold of and use every day. It's a functional gift. I know we get a lot of gifts at Christmas time, and some of them are not so useful. But this gift we can use every day, every night, in every hour, in our hours of happiness, in our hours of need, in our hours of despair, in our hours of disappointment. We all get those, right? But this gift allows us to look to the hills from which cometh our help and say, God, I need your help. God, I need your wisdom. God, I need more strength. God, I need more grace. God, have mercy on me. We have the opportunities to say these things to a creator who knows that we need these things, but is ready to provide those gifts to us each and every time we ask and believe that God will give them to us. When we think about the divine spark of this gift, of Jesus. We recognize that Jesus is with us all day and every day, and in December, Jesus is not a baby anymore. But we honor that time. There's still some question on if De December 25th is actually the day of Jesus' birth. But I beg for you to consider that part isn't the point. The point is, is that we take time out of our lives to honor that birth, to honor that gift, to honor that passage that Jesus went through for us. You know, babies don't ask to be born. And whichever way they are born, it can't be fun. I mean, whether you come through the tunnel, be pulled out of the womb, it can't be fun. The first moments are freezing compared to the environment that you were in. And it's, it's traumatic. It has to be. It's so traumatic that we don't get to remember it later, right? <laughs> but Jesus did it for us. Jesus didn't need to do that. But Jesus did it for us. God did this for us to give us more, to give us wealthier experience with in, in relation to this child born of the Virgin Mary. And as we continue to pay attention to the story that's not just a story, the historical recollection of what actually happened, the gift that was given for you and me, we pay attention to the fact that Jesus did really live, and Jesus did really die, and Jesus did really raise from the dead for our sins and bring us closer to God. The Gospel says that Jesus Christ came to earth lived the life we should have lived, and died the death we should have died. So when we believe in him, we're accepted, and live a life of grateful joy for him. And so when we have this fellowship with our Creator, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have this fellowship called koinonia. It is a Greek word, and it means that Jesus came and Christmas is true, we have a personal relationship with God, and it is no longer just an idea. It's no longer just a prophecy, but it is an actual fact, and we 
know personally for ourselves that we have been given this gift. As I prepare to close, I want to remind you that God coming into the flesh is one of many ways that God reaches out to us. God wants us to be closer. God wants us to continue to look to God. God wants us to continue to feel, to continue to listen out for, to continue to reach for our Creator for all that we need. To be thankful for the good things and to be thankful and prayerful about the not so good things. God wants us to remember that God is there for us and that God is so understanding that God went out of God's way for us to experience, for us to relate to, to us, for us to understand the reality of Jesus being born for us as a gift. So as we prepare to stand and sing together, hark the herald angels sing. I invite each and every one of you to keep God's gift so close in your life each and every day. When you wake up tomorrow morning, I want you to open that gift. <clears throat> and that will be the first and best gift that you have. And I want you to open it every day. And I want you to open it several times a day because it is that gift that keeps on giving. And it is special and perfectly given to you, each and every one of you. Amen. Please stand to your feet and sing together. Hark the herald angels sing. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, 
we have all received grace upon grace. At this time, I invite each and every one of you to take your candle and to spread around the sanctuary, <coughs> socially distance in your pods as you are together, and we will sing a few carols together with our lights lit in a circle.
Thank <laughs> you. 